Hi guys and welcome to my tutorial for fishing competition. So this plugin is a uh, plugin which allows your players to join a fishing competition, fish the uh, designated fish or any type of fish depending on what the plugin calls for, um, and then rewards the players for, for doing so. Um, pretty cool, it, it's just a very low footprint monument out in the ocean, um, it's completely locked up so no one can kind of enter or exit it. Uh, and it's got little fishing areas inside which you know, players obviously fish in. So, um, as well as a few other bits and pieces such as modified, um, uh, well, modifiable uh, line tension so the lines don't snap as often because that can be bloody frustrating. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do, how to actually import the um, prefab into the map to start with. Um, so we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to go open up a Rust Edit. And for those unfamiliar with how to open Rust Edit, I recommend just looking at a quick guide on how to install it. Uh, this tutorial doesn't require any sort of map knowledge at all. I'm going to sort of hold your hand through the process of putting this in, um, but I'm not going to cover the installation. So um, what you want to do is you want to basically make sure the, the prefab from the package is put into your custom folder. Um, so if those are unfamiliar with the custom folder, um, you just can navigate into your Rust Edit folder wherever you've installed it. And you want to go to your custom prefabs folder and make sure that you've put the prefab into here. So just simply drag all the contents of the prefab package. There should be either, I should look at only show you one or two files, it's not very many. Into here, doesn't matter where you put it, you can put it into a folder, you can put it in just into the, as a raw sort of folder, a raw file, like a dot prefab file. Uh, but once it's in there, we can minimize that for now. Uh, we're going to load our map. So have a have a kind of a map pre-generated. I assume that you know if you're going to be putting this into a map, you have an idea of what map you want to put it into. Um, you can either move it into your Rust Edit Maps folder or you can open it up from whatever location it's currently sitting at in your downloads or what have you, but uh, you want to open the map up. So I'm just going to open up one of my random procedural ones. Uh, now this scene's going to load um, and I'm just going to pause the recording while it does and when we're back in, I'll uh, open it up. Okay, you can see our map is now open in Rust Edit. Uh, a couple of quick pointers for those who don't know how to use the tool. You can hold down right click uh, and move your mouse around to move your camera. You can press G to open up the map and do the same thing. Um, you can use WASD to move around and shift increases your speed and you hold down right click and you kind of yeah, drag around. And that's kind of how you maneuver. Um, you can also press space bar to, to raise your attitude. Um, to lower it. So, uh, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to, to a body of water. Now, this has to be placed in the ocean. It can't be placed in fresh water because the, some of the fish that are, required, that are required to be fished are all salt water. Um, so, we're going to find somewhere out in the ocean. It's not really going to impact the, you know, any, any with anything else, maybe a little bit further away from rig. Um, and something that's obviously not going to have the cargo ship come through and kill everyone. So, just kind of offshore a bit, um, yeah, nothing nothing too far out, but yeah, just bear in mind it's just going to be a monument that players aren't really going to be able to access unless they're playing the game. So you can see here we've got our water, uh, we can actually remove it to see what sort of depth we have under here as well, so it's a, bit, a fair bit of depth uh, to it, which is fine. Um, what we want to do is we want to simply open up our prefabs folder once we've found the location of choice, go to prefabs list, type in competition should see fishing competition prefab and um, we're just going to double click the competition while looking at the, looking at the ocean you can see it's spawned the um the prefab so it's a pretty simple one um what we're going to do now is we're going to raise the height of this so it's not submerged but so it's not too high as to prevent the players from actually being able to fish so this is a pretty good height here you can see the water is still on its way down the water does in the edit does raise and fall um, i do believe it raises rises and falls a a bit more than what actually happens in the game, but um, it's probably not that far off. So give yourself a little bit of a buffer, but obviously not too far down. Um, you can even wait for the water to kind of reach its peak and then sort of go just above that peak. Uh, but if the water does kind of trail up above this during the game, it's not, unless their player is actually swimming, it's not going to impact the gameplay at all. So a bit about the monument, um, how it works is when the plug-in, so when this, when this spawns, the um, the plugin will automatically acquire these two items down below. So don't delete these. Make sure these stay in the plug in the uh, in the prefab. Uh, they're not a mistake. <laughs> they are intentionally placed there. 
This is the lobby area. So this is basically where the players enter the enter the game. They are going to spawn in this room here. These doors will automatically be locked using a key lock, so they can't be opened. Only the plugin can open them, or, or those with relevant admin powers. Um, and when the game starts, these doors open. Players are given rods and stuff, and they basically come around here and fish. So you can you can do whatever you like to this prefab. You can pretty it up, you know, whatever you want. So long as the layout doesn't change, these little items down here don't move away, and you've got somewhere to fish, obviously. So um, you can see here the monument is surrounded in um, uh, invisible colliders, so players can't enter or exit or land in, you know, land helicopters and stuff in here. Um, but that's pretty much it for the monument place. It's nice and easy. Um, we do actually. Uh, actually, no, there's not even topology. So there's yeah, there's not even topology to, to to lay here. So all of this should automatically have ocean topology, as long as you put it under an ocean, which is all that's required to catch saltfish. So um, yeah, easy done. So let's let's boot this up in the server and see what she looks like in game. Sorry, it is worth mentioning that you probably should save the map file as well. Um, so you just go file, save as, and name the map something unique. Um, so I'm just going to call mine fishing. Competition tutorial v1, and there we go. The map's now saved. Um, now, obviously, if, if you're going to be hosting a custom map, you want to host this on Dropbox or something like that, and then have your server your server um, startup bat point towards the location of the file um, instead of a procedural map. So you'll need to look at a tutorial of how to do that because I'm not going to cover that in this. Um, but basically, you want to make sure that the map is that the server is loading. The map that you've you've created in here, not the map that you know, not some procedural map. So let's uh, let's let's jump over to the server now and see what she looks like in game. Okay, so I've loaded into the map now. Um, <clears throat> you can see here we've got our map. I've already located the uh, monument on mine, so I'm gonna teleport over there now. And. Here it is. This is what it looks like in the day. Oh, that's what it looks like at night. So fairly well lit. Um, you know, pretty good performance-wise. Uh, basically, yeah, you can see here the the doors are automatically locked, so you can't actually open them up. Um, you've got mounting on each of the chairs, and yeah, in case people fall off, they can climb up the ladder. Uh, you'll be able to see here that you actually can't actually get in here, so I'm actually jumping around. It's because of the invisible collider. Um, so I can't even throw items in there, so it's you know completely completely isolated from the rest of the world. Um, but it doesn't look terrible as well, so it won't ruin the aesthetic of your map. So um, yeah, you can see we've got a little Pookie Bear anchor points and and whatnot, which is what handles the, the plugin side of things. Now to actually run the plugin, oh, that's my rock. Uh, now to actually run the plugin. Um, I'll show you how to do that manually. So by default, uh, the plugin will run with the event helper uh, plugin activated. Now the event helper is responsible for some of my other randoms like Hunger Games and and um, uh, Scuba Arena and soon to be Paintball as well. Um, but yeah, they uh, what it does is it's, it's responsible for stripping items from players and restoring them when they when they come back, as well as teleporting them to the start of the round and, and whatnot. Um, now this can this can actually schedule be scheduled to run um, automatically uh, by default. So every hour, what it's going to do is it's going to cycle through a new game. So if you've got Hunger Games on your map on your on your map as well as fishing competition as well as Scuba Arena, it's going to you know go through each of those games once an hour um, automatically. So you don't have to do any messing around with times and, and whatnot. So. Uh, let's start a game up now. We're going to do slash uh, start FC, which stands for fishing competition. And we're going to put a time parameter in there to override the default time. So by default, if I press this now, you can see here fishing competition is about to start. It's going to start in five minutes. Um, now I've set the, for the purposes of testing, I've set the, um, the value to zero. So let me just quickly adjust that in the configuration. All right, wonderful. So I've just, um, I've just set that to, to two minutes by default. So if I go start FC, if I put a time parameter in this time, so I'm going to say 60, this is going to start the game in 60 seconds rather than five minutes. As you can see here, it's uh, competition starts in one minute. We'll be catching all fish. 
and you type in slash go fish to join the competition. So I type go fish. Uh, you can see all my items have been stripped, I've been moved to the lobby area here, uh, and the doors are closed. So while waiting for this to start, I'm going to explain a bit how it works. Um, there are a number of uh, specified fish inside the, inside the configuration. Now these fish can um, can be caught, uh, obviously because we're, we're doing the all fish um, competition right now. Any fish I catch counts towards the balance of my, you know, my, of my, uh, my score. Uh, whereas if it was a specific type of fish, for example, sardines or, or something like that, it would only accumulate my score or increase my score if I catch that specific fish. So by default, there's a 25% chance that it'll spawn a, speci a fish specific competition, which are obviously a bit more difficult and RNG based, versus a um, an all fish. Now one thing you'll notice here is the fishing rod's different. So it's called a professional fishing rod, which is just a little item I created. Now this is all configurable, but this fishing rod will actually have a better line tensile strength. So that the it comes with um, obviously bait and, and whatnot you can use inside of your fishing rod. Um, and then all we need to do now is catch fish. So if I throw the line in, wait for a, uh, a fish to hook on the line. Um, you'll see that if I just basically pull it straight in, my rod doesn't snap as, as anywhere near as easily. It's because I've adjusted the modifier quite significantly. So it does still have the opportunity to, to snap, but you, yeah, you can see here small shark that would normally <laughs> destroy my line. Uh, but this particular fishing rod prevents that from happening. So, um, there we go. You can see uh, it accumulated how many fish I was caught on the side there. This plugin also supports fishing treasure with its hotspots as well, and allows you to keep caskets that you catch in the game. Um, so basically, if I if I get a casket while fishing in here. It will, uh, it will let me keep it. And this is actually a hotspot, which means I'm three times more likely to get a casket while fishing in here as well. So basically it's just a, it's a way to motivate players to kind of join the mini game and, and sort of compete. Um, and it's all, again, it's all set up automatically. So as long as you've got the latest version of fishing competition and latest version of fishing treasure, it will just work out of the box. But again, it's all configurable. If you don't want to put hotspots in here, if you don't want people to keep the items that they fish while in here, then they won't. Um, so the competition's almost done. Uh, you can see here I've got three individual pieces of fish in my inventory, so a shark, a salmon, and a sardine. Now I've set it in the configuration that I'm going to keep these items when I leave. As you can see here I've been given the fish. You can change that in the, in the config so you don't actually get those items. Uh, you can see here, um, fishing competition was won by the new guy, Go Easy. Uh, with three fish caught, type in slash FC to receive your prize. So I could type uh, FC prize, and I received scrap, FC prize, I'll probably have a few others in there as well, not that was the only one. Um, yeah, so you you can set up a random sort of prizes in there, it's got a, it's got a, a number of prizes in there, in there by default, which incorporate wood, stone, sulfur, scrap, and I think something else but you can easily add your own, which we'll go through in the configuration section of the plugin. Um, and you can see here all my items will return to me as per normal, everything with the, with the same ammo types, um, durabilities and, and whatnot. So that's kind of how it works. It's a very, very jump in, jump out sort of game. The players can easily drop what they're doing and join. And it just simply takes them back to where they started the game from. Um, really, really simple. And that professional fishing rod was obviously taken away because that is very, uh, very, very overpowered. Um, but again, you can adjust the values of it in the configuration. So you, if you want to give the professional fishing rod as a prize, it is definitely possible to do so with the way the price structure works. Um, so let's jump into the configuration side of things and show you what it looks like and how to customize and set up to your liking. Okay, so we're in the configuration uh, section now. Uh, you can see here we've got the fishingcompetition.json file open. Uh, so we're just going to run you through each of the lines individually uh, and let you know what they all do. So uh, starting here, you've got the duration of the competition. Now by default, this is set to 600. This is how long the competition will last for once it's started. So 600 seconds is 10 minutes. Uh, if, you want to if you want to lower that, if you want your competitions going for as long, then 
set that value to a lower value. Uh, delay before the competition starts. This is how long a player will have basically have time once the once the game um, has been announced to be able to join and to, to and participate. So once the game actually starts after this 300 second timer finishes, no one will be able to join. So uh, it'll teleport them to the lobby, and then once that um, once the game initializes, anyone who's in the lobby is able to do the fishing. Uh, chance for uh, a fish specific competition. This is, uh, as I mentioned before, you've got a list of fish here. These are fish that are found in all bodies of water and salt water. So small shark and small trout are um, salt water specific. Herring, salmon, sardine, and anchovy are all, all body all water types. Um, if uh, basically at the start of the the uh, the, uh, the game initializing, it's going to pick either one of these fish to, to, to target specifically or all fish and that's dependent on what you set this value to if you just want it to always be all fish set this to zero if you want this to always be a, a, a specific fish set it to 100 otherwise you can leave it as uh, that's what the default value is actually going to be 25 um, we'll most likely ship with this plugin uh, so every you know one in every four games will be fish specific because they are a bit more difficult um, obviously trying to catch a shark is uh, it's no easy feat uh, especially you know in such a short period of time um, but it also you know increases that competition as well so yeah you can um, you can adjust that to your liking uh, minimum participants now this is by default set to two I just had it set to one so I could actually showcase it uh, and basically it just means that there has to be a minimum of two people registered ready to play by the time the lobby timer finishes uh, how many roles on the prize table should a player get per redemption? Now, this is how many times when the player types in slash FC prize, um, how many how many prizes they get, so how many of these selections here they get. Um, how many minutes after a game ends should we automatically start another? Now, I've set this to zero by default because I manage it through um, the uh, helper plugin. I'm having a mental blank right now. Um, I manage it through the um, the event helper plugin, which is actually our next line. So you can set that if you if you don't want the event helper to to man, like to sort of do it, you can set this value to whatever you like. So if you wanted to start hourly, I think hourly is thirty six hundred. So that's, uh, how many seconds? Basically, the the, dif the difference in seconds for how often you want it to begin. Um, but again, if you've got this set to true, this value is kind of irrelevant. So if a player dies somehow during the event, should we give them, should we give their items back on spawn? Now this is basically if you're running if you're running plugins like kits where and you're you're giving a kit to a player when they respawn, you want to have this set to false. Uh, every other instance, you probably just want to keep it true. But the reason for that is when the, when the kit is given to a player um, on spawn, it wipes whatever's in their inventory, and most of the times this is going to fire before the kit does. So. Yeah, it's it's be on the safe side. If you're running kits and you're giving a kit to a player on spawn and wiping their inventory in the process, you want to make sure that you uh, <laughs> you you set this to false, and a player can then type a chat command in when they respawn in order to get their items back and take them back to their you know the the point where they started. But again, this is not a, a mini game that players really die in. So if they do die, it's probably because they've suicided instead of typing the leave command. Uh, run games automatically with the event helper. Uh, so I look I, I, again. I like I like I set this to true because I'd rather event helper schedule the games than the, this particular plugin. Uh, and the reason for that is because it works alongside of other games such as Hunger Games, Scoop Arena, and Soon to Be Paintball. So rather than having them all run concurrently, you can have them run consecutively. Uh, give players the fish they catch after the round. So if, again, if you don't want players to have that fish um, given to them, uh, so uh, kept when they when they leave the event, you can set that to false. Uh, but I do believe it's a good sort of monetary motivator to get players involved in the game, uh, letting them keep the fish that they do catch. So, uh, require fish. Uh, th these two next ones require fishing treasure plugin, which is another plugin I developed. Um, which basically the the TLDR is it adds caskets to, uh, as a, as a potential reward while fishing. So if you successfully successfully catch a fish, you um, you get rewarded with a casket, which will re which will give you three uh, items from a very large loot table. Um, so the first option here is let players keep the caskets they find after the round. Again, default set to true, so if they do get a casket, you know, they definitely want them to, to be able to keep them. 
um, and it also prevents by default this will prevent the players from opening the caskets in the uh, in the game because they would lose all of the items that they get if they did that. Uh, create a hotspot while the event is running. Now this basically uh, creates the hotspot when the event runs and then deletes it after. And while in the hotspot, players have a uh, by default is a three times uh, multiplier to uh, so to their chances of obtaining a casket. So instead of being one in two, it becomes one in sorry uh, six. So instead of being a uh, what is the math on there two percent chance, it becomes a six percent chance um, per catch. Uh, effect when catching a competition fish set to nothing if you don't want an effect. So basically you'll hear that you were hearing that little ding sound when I was catching a fish that registered as a point on, on my uh, scoreboard. You can set this to nothing if you don't want to have any sound effects, otherwise you can set whatever you want to whatever whatever sort of effect sound you want. If you're not familiar with effects, I wouldn't touch this unless you want to remove it. Um, but if you are you can set whatever you want to it. Uh, fishing rods uh, to use in the competition. So basically, the, the, when it came to the whole strain speed and the whole strain of the rod not snapping as easily, it's because I've set the strain speed, uh, strain speed multiplier to a smaller value. So by default, the, the standard default sort of rods uh, rod um, multiplier is 0.75. So a lower value means it has a less chance, has a much much less chance of snapping. A higher value means it's going to snap a lot quicker. So if you set it to say 10. It's not going to give you very much leeway at all. It's going to it's just going to go bang. Uh, whereas if you set it to zero, it's never going to snap. So, you know, play around with these values as you like. By default, it ships with 0.25. I may increase it to maybe 0.45 because 0.25 does seem a little bit too forgiving. Um, we'll see. Yeah, just keep an eye on it. But yeah, that, that's how it works. The default is 0.75, and the um, yeah, the, the lower lower is less less chance of snapping as you can see here. Uh, and here's the price uh, and, uh, and the uh, display name of the item. So this is that professional fishing rod. You can call this, you know, whatever the hell you want. It just simply renames the item in the game with this particular name. Now, if you wanted to give this as a as a as a prize as a prize to a player, um, I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But we'll go to the prize list for now. So you can see here we've got scrap and we have minimum, maximum. Uh, minimum quantity, maximum quantity, skin, and display name. So display name again is this custom sort of name you can give to an item if you really want to. So if you've got custom like other custom items from other plugins, you can easily recreate them in, in this uh, this this list here uh, and give them as potential prizes. So you can see by default we can give 250 to 400 scrap from winning the competition, um, 3,000 to 5,000 wood, 500 to 2,000 sulfur. I did have stones in there, but I think I took it out. You can add basically whatever you want and to add a new uh, add a new prize and it's quite simple you just kind of copy the last one comma the last curly there and then um, paste it you just want to make sure that these uh, I mean these short names don't have to be unique you can have multiple variations of sulfur if you really want to so you can say you know 200 and 4,000 to, to you know get a higher uh, lower lower chance of so high chance of uh, getting big so big numbers or you know smaller numbers so uh, otherwise if you wanted to um, if you, if you did want to uh, add a sort of another item, you can jump onto like a short name sort of section here. Rust item list. Um, and you can see we've got a list of items. So for example, like if I wanted the handmade fishing rod, I could type in handmade or fishing rod, look for the short name of the item. So fishing rod handmade, copy that, minimize it, and then put the short name there. Make sure there's no spaces or tabs. Uh, minimum quantity, maximum quantity, I'm going to set to one because it's a unique item. I'm going to copy the skin ID that I've set up here and put it down here. And I'm going to set the display name to, again, whatever I want, but I'll, you know, just for consistency, I'm going to make it the same as this one. And that adds one of those rods as a potential loot drop to a player. So whenever they, if they use this rod outside, it's going to have a much lower tensile strength, a lot, a lot much higher tensile strength for the line, so much less chance of snapping. So really easy to add things. Uh, the next one is kits to prevent, uh, sorry, commands to prevent a player using while well, the event. So kit is a big one, stops players from redeeming kits. But any sort of chat command that you think would mess with the event, such as TPA or um, uh, TPR or, or what have you, um, you can put in. It's very simple, just put a comma, new line, 
TPA, comma, new line, TPR. So again, yeah, any sort of plugins that you use, you can easily prevent these particular commands from being run while the player is at the event. Uh, fish types in the competition. So if there's any fish types that you don't want, just get rid of them. Easy. Um, these are these are these are more specifically to uh, these are more specifically for the um, the unique games. These will still count towards the old fish if they do if they do if they do get caught. Um, if for whatever reason you don't want salmon or you don't want small shark to be a, a target uh, item, you can just delete it. Uh, and these are junk items. Uh, these are the items that when you when you do catch something, not that you really will, because the bait levels are too high. But if you do catch these items, they just won't count towards the the accumulated value. Uh, yeah, and that is pretty much it. So the, the configuration side is very simple. Um, in terms of the installation, all you need to do is just drag the plugin into your Oxide folder. Make sure you've got the Event Help plugin installed as well, because that is a requirement. The plugin won't run without it. Um, so that, yeah, even if you drag it in and try to load it, it's just gonna, it's gonna tell you that it needs that plugin. Uh, the Event Hub plugin is very, very simple to go through. It's, it's got a very minimal config. Most of it's sort of handled from the, pl from the, from the plugins that uses, use it, such as Hunger Games and Scuba Arena and Fishing Competition and hopefully soon to be more. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, any issues, let me know. Uh, any sort of feature requests, again, let me know. Um, Hope you guys enjoy it and yeah, all the best.